Hello, we're glad you've joined us for this live webinar, Use Visualization to Boost Your Precision Medicine Research. I'm Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be moderating this session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. It's brought to you by ClueCore. ClueCore Omics Explorer is a DIY next generation bioinformatics software for research in life science, plant, and biotech industries, as well as academia. The powerful visualization based data analysis tool with inbuilt powerful statistics delivers immediate results and provides instant exploration and visualization of big data. To learn more, visit www.cluecore.com. Let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your screen labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the arrows at the top right-hand corner of the presentation window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the support tab found at the top right of the presentation window, or report your problem by typing it into the answer question box located on the far left of your screen. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present today's speaker, Carl Johan Iverson, President of ClueCore. Carl Johan Iverson has been the ClueCore President for 10 years and has more than 20 years' experience in the software industry, spanning areas from development to business management and sales in Sweden and abroad. Carl Johan Iverson will now begin his presentation. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Visualization-driven data analysis have many benefits. As you can see, uh, you can immediately start to draw conclusions based on a visualization as the one that is rotating in front of you. The user can see what is happening and control uh, the analysis through all steps. This improves quality and enables better and more actionable results. Today's webinar will be very visual, and I will demonstrate live using Clucal Omics Explorer. To do that, I will share my screen, as I'm doing now, and I will switch between slides and a live software demonstration. The, the objectives are to show you how you can understand more about visualization in combination with interactive filters and how that enables deeper insights for large and complex data sets. To learn more about how visualization-driven data analysis reduces the risk of errors and makes it easy to detect batch effects and outliers. Understand why visualization is important in precision medicine and diagnostics. But before we start with the visualization and the demonstration, I would like to tell you a little bit more about ClueCore. The Clue Core, Clue, finding the clue to, to the core, helping you, the users, to understand more about your data. We were founded in Sweden, which is in Northern Europe, in 2007. Uh, the ideas originates from Lund University. During the last 10 years, the company has developed significantly and now have clients in 25 countries and can list more than 600 articles in peer-reviewed journals that refers to QCOR. 29 of them are nature journals. We currently ship two new product releases every year and have done more than 10 releases since the start. The head office is in Sweden, and we also have an office in New York. There are native solutions, both for Windows and Mac users. Most well-known universities use KuCore. You can see a list of some well-known customers in the US above or in front of you, 
and you probably recognize the majority of them. Three out of uh, five of the largest pharma companies are customers, and a long list of smaller pharma and biotech companies as well uh, as universities in Europe that we find uh, in the bottom there, Oxford Institute, the King's College, Karolinska, and so on and so on. At Clucor, we always put visualization in the center. Additional statistics and methods are normally very table-based, as you can see to your left. Then in this case, you can generate a picture in the end. We do it the other way around. You always start with a visualization. Only work with visualization is not enough. You have to combine that with interactivity and ease of use to create useful solutions that deliver actionable results that also can be easily shared with colleagues and other user groups. The main result of using ClueCore is that we get the possibility to create better and more actionable results. This is achieved by taking advantage of the benefits, which are very easy to use. You never need more than a few mouse clicks to start a quite advanced analysis. And you will always get a visual feedback. 78% uh, of our users state in customer service uh, that Glucomex Explorer is easy or even very easy to use. You get, as I've said, always a visual feedback. So you know what you do and you know what actions you have taken. The visualizations in Glucor are extremely fast. So that makes it possible for you to test many ideas and you also get the interactivity. If you compare, for instance, the principal component analysis plot, PCA, which I will show you more about later, it is many, many times faster than all other software solutions. The underlying software architecture is very generic. We have an assumption-free analysis built in. And if that isn't enough, you can expand the program both with R and scripts in Python. You can work with a very broad range of omics and NGS data. And here are a number of examples. And it's both for the measurements and, and, of course, also for annotations. And we support a wide range of, if we call it, industry standard file formats. That was a short introduction to ClueCore and ClueCore Omex Explorer, uh, but now let's have a look into precision medicine. One way of approaching a precision medicine project is shown above. There are three phases. Uh, central is the possibility to group and classify patients into well-defined subgroups. During the innovation and development phase, focus is on understanding more about subgroups and developing a solution that is based on the combination of a drug and a diagnostics test. As we move forward in, in time, the diagnostics test shall be applied and results delivered from labs to the physicians. With growing complexity and panel-based tests, the need for clear communication methods increase. The third phase is to present findings to the patient and discuss treatment options. Let me show how this might look in the future. In a short while. Uh, visualization will play a role in all phases, but it will differ. In the live demonstrations later, I will show you visualization for the first phase, but before that, I would like to show you some ideas on how it might look in the last phase. So here you see how it might look when a doctor meets a patient and visualizes uh, the outcome of a diagnostic test. As you can see, the, that is the patient that now belongs to the yellow subgroup, and we need to find a treatment uh, to manage uh, the disease that the patient has uh, suffering from. When we know which group, the individual belongs to, it's about managing the treatment trajectory, 
moving the patient from the yellow group to the green group of healthy individuals. And this is how that could be visualized to the patient. Okay, sorry, that, that brings me to uh, going back from the patient, uh, the third phase of a precision medicine uh, project to the first phase, phase and actually start to look at how software it can help you uh, in designing subgroups. So the, the first demonstration will show how you quickly and easy uh, can do an initial inspection of a data set and how that can be verified towards known annotations. I will show you multiple visualizations and filters and also give you some ideas on how the visualization can safeguard from missing important aspects of your data set. So now I will switch here uh, to uh, QCoromics Explorer, which you have uh, in front of you. I have already loaded a data set and I have loaded a, a so-called PCA plot. In this case, there are 132 samples. Uh, each sphere represents one patient. In this example, it's a patient who has leukemia. The three principal components here is a way of reducing the dimensionality of this large data set. There are 13,266 uh, genes that are measured. So if you would print this um, in Excel, it would be like some, uh, around 4,000 pages. So that gives you the size of the table or the matrix that we are managing. Before I dig into the analysis and exploration, let me just give you some short introduction to the user interface here. You control a lot of the actions with a pointer, and as you can see, I can rotate. I can select to label something, and I do it like that. And the labeling works both in tables and in plots. And clear that. Here is to the left here, there are four tabs. A sample tab will uh, include information about annotations, sample annotations. This is where they are imported or loaded. The variable, collected variable lists that can be generated or imported. The log tab here tells you exactly what calculations that has been done to the data set. And the NGS tab is for filters when you're working with NGS data. This window here includes the statistical filters that you can use, so variance filtering here, uh, different type of ANOVA and t-tests are available here, and the extension here is for uh, extensions out to R. You select the plot types uh, up here, and there is a quite a long range of different plots that you can select from. Uh, we will start to use the PCA plot and some of the tools. I will tell you a little bit more uh, as we work our way through this data set, uh, but I believe you have the basics now. So we would expect to see subgroups uh, in, a, in a data set and, uh, if it's a leukemia, but we are not seeing anything, and that is because there is noise in the data, and we need to manage that noise in some way. And variance filtering is a good tool uh, to do that. And what we will do now is to remove variables by uh, uh, filtering on variance. So the, the variables with the smallest variance will be removed here. And as you see, this is really the unique uh, feature or one of the unique features where you get a fast and interactive uh, response to your actions, exactly as I told you earlier. Um, then you can always discuss how much you should filter, and that depends on what type of objective you have. In this case, we are going to look for subgroups, so something that 
gives me a clear view. There is also a metric here called projection score, which I will not go into deeper, but green means that uh, the visualization that you're looking at is a good representation of the data set. If we look here in the PCA plot, we can clearly see that there are, seem to be structure. There is one group over here. There is one here, or one here. Then there are a couple of samples here in the middle, which maybe they are our own group, or do they belong to this group over here? That is not easily decided at, at this point. And, and this is typically what I meant earlier with that you get the deeper insights into the data just by looking at it. It is also uh, a possibility to detect like batch effect, because if this was a batch effect, if you, for instance, have an annotation describing that they, these were from a different geographical uh, position or a different lab, that you would clearly see that directly. Now, what do you do when you have identified that group? Yeah, we create an annotation, give it a couple of values, color it, and then we are going to annotate those samples here. And this is how easy it is done. You use your pointer, a few mouse clicks, and we have now divided our data set in two groups. To learn more about the, this larger group here, we can re temporarily remove those samples. And in QCore, you don't have to restart anything. You can just click that group, and they are removed, and now they are back. If you look down to the left here, then you will see that there is only 118 samples left. And now we are back to the 132. So let's see. Did that make it a little bit clearer? Yeah, here is one, another group. Uh, and then to get more information and help, you can connect the nearest neighbors. And then we see, we can select that group. And if we bring it back, then the question is what we're going to do with those four that I observed earlier. And you can see there are probably more groups here. One way of, of uh, then continuing would be to do the same thing, to remove all the three groups and then dig deeper into the rest of the data set uh, and do at least add one more group here. Okay, since it's so clear. But you can also try to use other plot types. So one of the options that we have is uh, TSNI plots. So if we update the TSNI plot, uh, unfortunately, it's not possible to make that completely interactive uh, since uh, it's quite extremely extensive calculations. With, with uh, so, so it has to be a calc button for that one. But you can see the patterns are very similar. Uh, the groups that are identified with PCA, and you also get help to identify some of the other groups. And then you can also see there are samples that you can start to think about this is the right group and so on. And the four ones are still here in, in, the, in the middle. And we can, of course, uh, annotate uh, also in this plot. So if we Take those, for instance. We have that information, and we can go back to the PCA plot. And let's see then uh, what we have found. One way of doing that is to compare uh, with uh, existing annotations, if you have that. So let's create so-called synchronized plots, where you have all the uh, same uh, calculations being applied to the data set, but you can have different annotations. And there is an annotation here called leukemia subtype. And 
you see that we identify the yellow group, which is equal to this uh, purple one here, TALLs. We identified that one over here, which is equal to the E2A PBX1 group, and so on, and so on. But And we have also identified part the white group over here that is called uh, part of the other group, and so on. So, so we, we found relevant results is the conclusions, and we did that very quickly at the same time as we had good control um, of, of uh, the process. This was a, a form of uh, supervised clustering where the individual, the user, you are involved in deciding uh, clusters. Um, with QCore, you can also um, apply K-means plus plus clustering. Here is one example. So if I select like a uh, number of clusters, seven, I get the new annotation and I can put that here. And you see we identify similar groups. So th this is a way of verifying your results. So let me change here. So to summarize uh, demonstration one, uh, it was quick to find structure and we have had full control of, of the data through all the steps. Uh, and this enables the user to test many more ideas in, in a given time, do both easy and advanced, advanced analysis without being an analysis expert. Uh, you can utilize your domain knowledge uh, for deeper insights. Uh, you can know things about the specific samples, and you can see that in, in the plots. And what we have seen when organizations implement uh, the use of QCore, the biologists are able to ask the analysis experts better questions. We move on, move on here to uh, demonstration number two. So back again to the, the programs soon. And after the demonstration, you will know how visualization gives deep insights into data and why it can be very useful to combine visualization with statistical tests. You will also see how, an example how you quickly can verify results in a second data set and how easy it is to communicate results using, for instance, a PCA. Uh, there we go. So I will close uh, that one, keep that one, remove that. So what I will do now, uh, I will apply, show you the table view. So this is how you could expect that it looks uh, in a table. And then we are going to do a test, uh, a t-test, a statistical test, two-group comparison. I use this annotation called leukemia subtype, and I will test for DAML uh, group towards all uh, other uh, samples. And I just move this slider here, and you see how the number of variables goes down, so 295. Uh, I'll go down to around 100. And I think um, we would like to store this result of the discriminating variables, discriminating genes. And for that, I have a list that is already available here that is updated when I change this filter. So if I change it, it's there. I just make a copy of it. And then it will salt. And then I can uh, add information like uh, p value, force discovery rate, which is q value, and it's available here as columns. So it looks very good, and this is a typical step that you could uh, 
do in in uh, uh, in R or any other software. But what 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 can we see if we, for instance, bring up a visualization instead? So let's show you another one um, with a heat map, and I will get all my samples, and I will color it according to the annotation we are working with. So there, um, there you see that there, there are uh, you can see things like this. Uh, you can easily see uh, in the the uh, heat map that there is one sample which is not very consistent uh, that comes from the green group but seems to be very close to the blue group and that gives you additional information which you never find you, you don't have a chance to find that in a table or by just looking at the selected variables with the lowest Q value you need some sort of visualization to help you detect that there is one sample here that we might have to look a little bit closer to. And if you select a heat map or you select a PCA, it doesn't really matter because you will pick out that, that specific sample, even if we have selected the 108 variables that are best on separating these blue groups, these blue samples from the others, there are one sample here that might need a closer investigation. And again, if you would go back to the Disney plot, I'm quite sure it will pop up here too, and it does. So it's very useful uh, to use the visualizations to complement your statistical test. Okay, we have now done a statistical test, we have visualized, we have learned more, we dig deeper into the data, and we have a list of 100 most discriminating genes that can separate this PLAML1 group from the others. Uh, does that, is it only specific to this data set or, or uh, does it have a broader meaning? One of the very useful tools in Qcomics Explorer is that you could uh, download data from gene expression omnibus in a very straightforward way. So here is another uh, leukemia data set that some, some other group has done. I have loaded it. I have multiple data sets open. And we can, uh, it's now on, uh, not on gene symbols, so I will have to adjust that and I can do it in here. So now I, I soon have both my data set on gene symbols so that I can compare them. Then, to see how my list of 100 uh, genes here uh, is performing uh, or affecting my new data set, I can just do that. And it seems to separate out a subgroup here from, from the others in this data set. And let's try to see from the annotations what that might mean. It seems like we have that list of 100 genes that can is 86 when it's gene symbols and uh, 86 matches. Separates out these yellow samples and let's see in the annotation here what those are. The TLAML1 and if you remember that is the blue group here that we actually created the list for, for. And then there are some others here, interesting. And then there is TLAML1 plus hyperdeploidy over there. So biologically a very sound result than what we could have hopes for and we have now verified the list generated in the first data set in the second data set and done it in in a very very uh, short time so to summarize demonstration two 
We have less, in less than 10 minutes found new results and visualized them. We have verified the findings in the second data set. And during the steps we have, with the help of visualization, been able to have full control and actually also found some potential issues that we need to address. Visualization-driven data analysis for precision medicine is performed by individuals, that is biologists, bioinformaticians, and other scientists. But to secure high efficiency, the right setup in an organization is required. To do that, the following areas need attention. Deployment and customization. And as example for that is that we have Mac and Windows. Um, we also have something called templates where you can uh, create specific workflows for your organization. Uh, onboarding is always very, very important. Uh, Kukor with the visualization is easy to learn. And there are also templates that can be specific and used as a starting point for learning in addition to traditional learning material like videos, webinars, documentation, and so on. Then uh, learning and enhancing. It's not only to learn once, but you also need to uh, enhance and expand your usage. We have training, supports, and uh, on-site events uh, for, for larger organizations. Let's now move into something that is uh, very hands-on in uh, the aspect of uh, precision medicine. Uh, we have now learned things about our data sets and uh, know them well. Um, next step could be to actually build a classifier and try it on uh, some samples to see how it works. In the end, it is the outcome of, of precision medicine has to be a drug uh, or, and uh, a diagnostics test to, to come with it. So that I switch back here. Now I will close uh, those data sets that I have used and bring in uh, a training data set that I will use. Uh, and a validation data set. Okay, so now I have two data sets open, and that is a good starting point if I'm going to build a classifier. Um, very many times, uh, it makes a lot of sense to reduce um, the number of variables before I start. Uh, so, and, and the variance filtering is again a good point here to try to remove some noise. Um, exactly how much it will have to be an iterative process, but uh, one way is of course to use the visualization and try to find a point where that starts to be structured in the data set. That, that's not a bad starting point. I've done that. Then I go to this tab up here called Build Classifier, and I get a number of options. I can select different classifier methods. I'll select Support Vector Machine. Then it's asked for the key. Uh, I select the leukemia subtype. I can uh, help. Uh, the classifier of ranking my samples, and then you can either build, uh, built in, use a built-in cross-validation scheme, or you can use a validation data set. Uh, validation data set is uh, to preferred. So, selected, important here, uh, SVM, leukemia subtype, Ranking multi group comparison, validation data set is this one, and the validation key has the same name. Then I press build. Uh, lab root two. That's the name of the classifier that I'm building. And you will be presented with a report here about 
the classifier, where you can find a lot of parameters for how the SVM uh, was uh, constructed, and you will see the outcome, uh, and you can see we classified everything perfect without but one sample in the TLAML1 group wasn't classified uh, correctly uh, in, the, in the validation data set, which, yeah, of course we would have wished for accuracy one, and by tweaking, changing parameters and so on, we, we could probably uh, achieve it, but this is still a good classifier. You get the information about uh, the hyperparameters that is used and tested, and you get a list of the variables that is used in the classifier. So, then we are going to find out how it actually works on a new data set. So, let me minimize those and import a third uh, data set, data to test. So here are a data set with 10 samples, and now I can apply that creative classifier to this. And I get a new annotation. I can color accordingly, and then if I take, if we say the truth then, the original classification of these, and put that as labels, we can see how we succeeded. So, if we take the, uh, the white ones, E2A PBX ones, interesting. Uh, maybe wrong color coloring here. Uh, CARL, hyperdeployed. Everything is, is as uh, we want it to be. So with this uh, uh, last step, we have created a classifier. We have uh, tested it, uh, validated it, and, and also run it on a, on a th uh, third data set. Which uh, gives us uh, brings us to the end of uh, the demonstrations here. And to summarize, the precision medicine promise requires expanded measurements for drug development and diagnostics to companion uh, new drugs. Visualization is a key tool to improve precision medicine science. Um, it supports all the phases from innovation to development, and even to the going all the way to the patient. And with visualization, you will enable improved results and new findings, fewer mistakes, involvement of more scientists or scientist groups, and clear communication, both internally but also externally. Glucormix Explorer is available for a free trial download, so you can try it yourself. Um, but, uh, and which is something we really recommend. My demonstration here is yeah, uh, only a start. The best thing is, of course, to go and see for yourself. Uh, with that, uh, we are opening up for questions. Thank you, Carl Johan, for your presentation. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Carl Johan Iverson will answer as many questions as time permits. The first question is, what type of classifiers do you support? Yeah, so the, there are currently three uh, classifiers that we support, uh, support vector machine, uh, random trees, and uh, K&N. Uh, in in uh, not too far future, we will also support so-called XGBoost uh, uh, classifiers. Thank you. 
Next question is, is it possible to integrate the program in a workflow? Yes, so if you have uh, workflows in your organization that can, um, uh, that you're, are very specific, we have a functionality called uh, templates uh, to support that, uh, where you or the, or the organization can write scripts in Python that then are executed in, in QCore, which makes it possible to do uh, maybe half of the steps that uh, I have been showing you here, and then you get to a point where you then can begin, uh, continue the analysis. So the template is uh, not the end point, but the new starting point. Thank you. Next question is, how easy is it to get started? Yeah, uh, I say if you're a normal user of, of software, um, it probably takes you one or two hours to get you well acquainted with the program, and then you're up and running. Uh, so uh, it's really quick. Great. Looks like we have time for one more question, and that will be, can I try it myself? Yeah, as you can see in front of you here, I guess that question came early. So uh, download a free trial uh, on qcore.com and, and try it, and we will be happy to support you uh, during uh, that work. Well, I would like to once again thank Carl Johan Iverson for his presentation. I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank our sponsor, ClueCore, for underwriting today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand through September 2019. Libraries will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.